So what decisions do you make when choosing a pigment? Or do you just go off what you've seen in forums? Making the wrong choices can put your clients at risk of bad work and remember that you're the one who's gonna to have to deal with that down the line. You absolutely should know what kind of pigment you're using so that you can predict the outcome and your long-term heal. So let's talk about the two main kinds of pigments. You've got organics and inorganic pigments. Organics usually contain a lot of carbon, which comes from organic matter, such as trees, and inorganic contain substances such as iron oxide that come from inorganic materials, such as rocks. Let's take a look at a couple of them. So let's look at some pigments then. So this is chocolate truffle by Li Aqua. Aqua is a water-based pigment, so it means that um, yeah, it's, it's water-based. It does tend to dry out a little bit quicker because of this. Um, but these are what I give to my students. These are inorganic pigments. So I'm just gonna put a little blob on the back of my hand there. There we go. Just spread that out. So these are probably less pigmented than most organic pigments. Now the particles such as iron oxide are larger, so they take longer to get into the skin. So that can be a little bit frustrating for some people, but even though the particles are larger, they do break down in sunlight quicker, so your work will fade. These are what I put in my student kits, because if you're finding your way through the permanent makeup industry and, and doing brows in the beginning, you don't want your early brows coming back to bite you. So the chances are you've got much more chance of this fading. So this one you may recognize, this is um, a brow daddy pigment. All these are permablend. You can see that they've got similar bottles, similar um, tops. Just gonna give him a shake there. Um, and I'm gonna put this on the back of my hand as well. Just a little blob there. So this one is an organic pigment. Now, can you see already that that's really, really highly pigmented? And that's why a lot of artists like these because there's so much more color in them and they're gonna get into the skin really quickly because the particles are small, so it's easier to get them in. But the drawback with carbon is that it's um, easy to go too deep with it. It tends to heal cool. So if your pressure is too much and you're going too deep, you're going to get really cool, ashy, grey results that can heal blue over time. It's also just not going to fade the same in sunlight. Um, carbon as well, because the particles are small, it does like to move. So your hair strokes can blur over time. So I had microblading when I first had my eyebrows done and when I zoom in on the very front this is years ago I can just about see one of the inorganic hair strokes and it's still crisp even though it's faded so with hair strokes what you can get with carbon especially if you do microblading which tends to heal cool anyway is you can get a blurry result over time and then there isn't really much you can do with it you have to go to a powder brow or you have to get it removed so I would say if you're doing microblading stick to inorganic Right, so this is just some water on this um, on this wipe. So even though it's left a little bit of a brown mark, you can see that I can remove that really, really easily. So this is just water on the brow daddy. So you can see that with water that just spreads it. So if you were, if you had a template there and you were trying to clean up your work, it's much harder to keep clean with organic. So you have to give it a scrub. So I've got much more chance of, of losing my shape with an organic pigment. So you may have to go for something like some uh, green soap to keep it um, to keep it clean. Um, you can see that that's, I look like I've got a bit of a fake tan there. So because these are so highly pigmented, they do spread a little bit. So I would say that something like this is definitely not for beginners. Um, I would I would say that you need to absolutely know your depth um, before you start uh, messing with carbon. It's just not worth it in the beginning, okay? So here's Monica Rivani. That is just an artist signature range of LI. So these are the same company. Um, so that's her own brand and they are also inorganic. So inorganic pigments over time can heal warm. So you may see people walking around with the reddish brows, the salmon brows, but actually with LI, what I found because they have um, a really even light fastness, so all their colours that make up that colour fade at the same rate, 
they generally just come in as a faded brown. This is why I give this to my students because I'm confident that their work over time is not gonna come back and they're gonna go like, how do I deal with that? Okay, so let's go to this middle section here. I'm sorry I knocked Jen over. Um, so this is um, a Hanami pigment, which is technically an organic pigment, but they've messed around with it on a molecular level so that it behaves differently and it does fade over time. So you do get good fading with Hanami, um, even though it's organic. So you get nice bold colours, but they do fade. They are very expensive, though. And again, I would say not for beginners. Now, Gem Boyd, as you can see, looks similar to Monica Rivani, and that's because this is an LI artist range. OK, but this is a hybrid, so it's mostly inorganic. My orange hand. <laughs> it's mostly inorganic, but it does have some organic in it, too. So let's just give them. I'm just going to clean my hands so we know. I'm just going to get some green soap on there and give it a, a good wipe. So you can see that even now there is still a little bit of, um, of colour on there. So I'm going to put some Gen Boyd on the back of my hand there. So this is an LI, mostly um, inorga inorganic pigment, but there is some carbon in there as well. Um, so you can see that compared, that compared to the chocolate truffle, that is much more highly pigmented. Looks a little bit more like a carbon. Um, let's get our water wipe there. So it does clean, but you can see not quite as easily as the LI Aqua. So it's leaving some pigment behind. So generally, if my clients, if I start them out on the LI and they come back with not great retention, I might go for Gemboid or I might just go for Gemboid straight away. These are really great pigments and I love them. Um, so this is kind of like your halfway. Uh, if you are working with an elderly client, I would always say go for your um, inorganic first because they tend to hold on to the pigments and they tend to heal cool so just be very careful remember with permanent makeup there's two sessions so you can always go for something stronger at your second session um, tina davis um, this is perma blend as well and as i said brow daddy these are all perma blend pigments and generally all carbon based pigments um, they tend to give you bolder results less sheer so if you're going for a bolder look um, these are these are great for that um, they do have a tendency over time to heal cool though, so ashy grey, and you have to put a lot of warmth, sometimes red, into them. So for me, I prefer, I generally have clients coming for a really natural look, so I generally would pr prefer to use something less strong. I do use a lot of this though, this is Permablend Double Black, and I'll use that for eyeliner. Really, 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 really black pigment. It's about the blackest I've found. You can see just how much darkness there is in that. So I'll use that for eyeliner, but I would never use that on someone with very vascular eyelids because carbon can travel. And what you will see is your eyeliner actually starting to spread out um, and it can actually move up the blood vessels. So if someone had very vascular eyelids or if you're a beginner, you need to stick to iron oxide. OK, there we go. You can just see how hard that is to clean with water. Um, it is so highly pigmented. So there is no wrong or right. There's just different pigments for different situations. So I hope that that looking at them and see how, seeing how they behave makes it a little bit clearer for you. So the benefits of organics are that they're really long lasting. Carbon is very small particles, so it gets into the skin easily. So it's far less work for an artist and it gives really bold results too. Now the downside of that is it's really bold and long lasting. So what if you don't want your brows to stay the same forever? Also, it tends to heal cool. So those blue or grey eyebrows that you see walking around, yep, that's carbon. And those are just not going to go on their own. However, due to the particle size, carbon does laser away easily. The advantages to inorganic is that it heals really sheer and natural. Because of the larger particle size, it's much more stable in the skin, so it doesn't migrate as easily. It also fades much more quickly. The downside is that it fades much more quickly and it doesn't get into the skin as easily. And so the results can be too sheer for some people. It can also heal a bit warm over time. Those pink brows you've seen, yep, yeah, that's your inorganics, but that will fade more easily and it's easier to cover. So let's pick a pigment. First question, who are we? Are we a beginner? Are we heavy handed? Are we unsure of our depth? Go for an inorganic you're at much less risk of making long lasting mistakes. What are we doing? Are we doing brows? So what do we want to achieve? If we're doing hair strokes, then inorganics have less chance of migrating and staying crisp over time. If we're doing an ombre and you're light handed, you could try carbon. 
but honestly, I just tend to stick to inorganics and hybrids. People's faces change, so your brows will need to change. I don't think that fading is a negative. For me, it's a positive. Are we doing eyeliner? Then beginners, choose inorganic. It's so easy to blow out on the eye. It's such thin skin. If you're experienced and the client's lids aren't too vascular, then carbon is your best bet for long lasting color. I do use a lot of highly pigmented organic pigments on liner. I'm not anti-carbon, I just use it in the right situation. What is your client like? Is she older? Then stay away from carbon. Older people heal cool and their skin is thin. It's just too much. Younger people, I usually use a lot of hybrids. It's mostly inorganic with a bit of organic for that little bit of oomph. Lips, I use a lot of organics. And most lip pigments also contain titanium dioxide to make them opaque. The rule of thumb with lips is bright, heals, light. The more opaque your pigment is, the more obvious it's gonna be, as the light can't pass through it. For all of these decisions, remember to always err on the side of caution. We do a top up for a reason. We can always go darker or bolder or change our pigment. We can't go lighter. And adding warmth is so much harder than cooling down. Beginners, heavy-handed people, and anyone working on older clients, always inorganic. Use carbon with caution, it's gonna stick around and avoid it for microblading. Carbon likes to travel with its small molecules, so it will blur over time and your crisp hair strokes will not stay like that. Implanting pigment probably takes skill, so if you want to learn needle movements and how to do them correctly, then I made this video here. I welcome any of your comments and questions and hope to see you all soon.